afternoon, everyone. We're back at it with another REACH tutorial. My name is Michelle White, and today we're going to talk about integrations within the data list. So we'll talk a little bit about FTPs and, and API directions, but we're mainly going to focus on how to take an Excel file, like the one you see, and take that and upload it into the data list so it looks like this. So with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so right before we actually start with the Excel file, let's just take a sec here to talk about, you know, an FTP route or even an API route. Um, if you are sort of interested in that, I always just tell the client, like, let's set up a meeting with myself, maybe one of our developers, and let's just sort of maybe talk that out because obviously there's a lot of different ways we can access an API. And we need to determine if we're doing sort of a push method or a pull method. And so sometimes ironing out that those small details will sort of help us with what direction or what direction we need to take to help you set up the data list integration. Um, obviously, we have examples. We've, we've done it before, but obviously for security reasons for our clients, you know, I'm not obligated to sort of show you that information. But know that it's possible. Know that you're in the right area. Um, if you're sort of one of those, those clients where you're like, well, I kind of want to dig in there, you know, and figure it out myself. Totally fine. I, I, I completely get it. Um, how you sort of access that is just want to make sure you're in the data list. Okay. You'll obviously want to create a data list as well. So you'll want to mirror those uh, columns. And then once you do that, I'll just sort of select one here, just to kind of show you where to go. You would then select manage integrations and then right up here, add integration. And these are sort of the different file types that I'm sort of referring to. And, and yes, I am kind of brushing it over a little bit because you know, to help you set this up successfully, it is best to take that 10, 15 minutes and jump on that call. All right, team, so let's talk about this Excel file now. So here we have this. This is the Excel file I want to upload. Um, this is actually from our, our Jira applications, how we actually help our, our developers with, with bug issues. Um, so here is our Excel file. This is what I wanna take and I wanna upload it into the data list. So the very first step that we need to do is obviously create a data list. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we name our columns exactly the name of these. So I'll have a column called issue type, issue key, you know, ID, and, and so on. So let's go back into the reach CMS. We're going to go up here to create list. And I'll just call this Jira for our demonstrations. Obviously, if you can see already, I already have one. But uh, for this tutorial, we'll just call it Jira. We'll hit OK. All right. So this is the column part. So our first one was called issue type. And we'll keep it as text. Again, majority of the time, you guys, it's always going to be text, especially when you're doing an integration. I know sometimes, depending on clients, um, they might have a column that has basically money information. Even if it has money, when we do the integration, the system is going to take that and convert it to text anyway. So you're always just going to have text when you are doing an Excel integration. All right, so I'm going to hit Add Column. All right, and then our second one was called issue key. Again, gonna be text, hit add column. All right, and so I'm gonna speed this up of the tutorial now. Um, that way this doesn't get too long. All right, so I have all the column names in here. Now, the last thing that we need to do, which is sometimes it's like the easiest thing to kind of forget when you're doing an Excel integration, is we need to determine what column is always going to have unique information, meaning that it's not going to have the same information in multiple rows. So let me kind of better explain that. Since we have this Excel file here, I'll kind of you know open some of these columns here so they make a little bit more sense. So we want a column that always has different information. So we know column A, as you can see, it just keeps saying task, 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 task. So that doesn't have unique information, right? There's not, there's not like a unique variable. So we know that that's not going to be our column. Now, column B, that looks like a good column because it says bugs, but the numbers 249, 376, right? It's never repeating in this column. They, each row has its own different number. So that technically could be a very good, what we call a unique identifier. Same with column C, right? That could be a good one. Technically, this one could be two, right? The summary could be different. Now, assignee, as you can see, look, we might have a couple people with the same sort of information, same row. That's not going to work. Reporter's not going to work. Priority, status, and, and really, actually, as you can kind of see, all these other columns are not going to work 
because a lot of these rows have the same information. So really our column B and our column C are, are really our, our best columns here. And either one is, is fine. So I'm just gonna do column B. So now that we've identified that, what we wanna do is we wanna come back into the CMS and we wanna apply this identifier, okay? And so there it is, issue key, that was the one. And we'll just kind of verify real quick, issue key is the one that we want to do. All right, so what we wanna do you guys is we wanna hit edit here and we wanna change or checkbox this so that therefore it is true. All right, so as you can see now, this is the only one true. So when I do the integration, the integration is always gonna look at this column to have unique information. It's a very easy thing to forget about when we're dealing with Excel files. Now, what if you say to yourself, well, Michelle, you know, my Excel file, it, it doesn't actually have one. You know, what, what do I do then? So if you don't have a column that has unique information, which, you know what, sometimes that happens and that's okay. What we do is we create a separate column and we call it series. Nothing crazy, right? Nothing too special. And what we do is we start to make that unique identifier. And now this is a lot of work, right? Going row by row, right? But here's a little shortcut. So what you can do is you can grab this and you see the little plus sign. You can scroll all the way down. Then you let it go. And then here you'll say fill series. Now look at that. Now this column, column M, has a unique identifier. And that's how you can create one. So if you're looking at your Excel file and you're like, ah, I just don't have one, this would be the way to, to basically create that. And then you'll just want to make sure in your data list that you have a column called series, its type is text, and that it is true. All right, so we've done this now, right? We've, we've created the data list, which was you know step one. We've now created the columns. So now we're gonna create the integration. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay here. All right, so now to create the integration, we'll make sure that our data list is selected. So this is the one that we've created together, we've started. I'm gonna go up to manage integration. I'll hit the button called add integration. And then again, this is a name. So most people will actually name their integration based on where the source is coming from. So this is an Excel upload. So I, I usually just put Excel upload. If it was like an API or an FTP, you know, or something we're setting up, I would then just name it where the source is, is being displayed or stored at. So data type, we're gonna choose Excel file. And then it's not an API, right? We're gonna actually upload this. So we'll choose upload. And then these are all the columns that we've created. I personally like to just double check at this point to make sure that I have all the columns, they're all text, and that I just have one true. And remember, that one true means that the, that one column has unique information. All right, we're gonna hit okay. All right, and so I'm getting that notification, getting a, you know, a thumbs up saying like, hey, looks good, everything was created. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into this integration and now we're actually gonna take the Excel file and we're gonna upload it. So here it is, my integration that I've, you know, I've created. Sure, here's some of the data format. Again, just kind of giving me that clarification. But here we go. This is where we wanna to go to upload the information. All right, so I selected my file. It says right here and I'm gonna hit submit. Again, getting that notification that it was uploaded successfully. And then if you go to job history, you'll see that you've got it completed. Now at this point, if it does say incomplete, just give it a sec, sometimes depending on how big your Excel file is. I mean, my Excel file was only like maybe 20, 20 30 rows maybe. Um, obviously, if you have an Excel file that you know has more data in it, it might take just a sec or two to load up. So don't get discouraged if it says incomplete right away. You know, maybe just come back in like 10, 15 seconds and I guarantee you this will change. Um, but okay, so it says completed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into that data list and see the information uploaded. And all right, so as you can see, here's all the information from my Excel file. So. All I would need to do now, now that the integration is established is 
anytime I want to make a change, right, I'm going to go back to my Excel file, I'll make whatever changes I want, and then really I'm just uploading it at this point. Now, what we would do is on the layout editor, we'll kind of jump into that. We'll go to this layout called Jerabug. All right, so again, on the front end, we have a lot of different ways we can stylize the information. So once the information is dumped into the data list, really the widget we're going to use, it's called a list widget. And you can find that widget under, let's see here, under the graphs and forms. It's right here. Now, if you go to list settings, of course, this is going to be all of your data list. So this is going to show all the data lists you have. Um, again, this is the one that I had uploaded previously. I'll go ahead and switch this out to the one that you and I have created. Um, we have some functionality here, right? Enable page, page indicator. Like, what does all this mean, Michelle, right? So basically, again, depending on how big your Excel file is, you might have more information than what can fit in the space given. So what it's going to do is that the widget is smart enough to calculate, hey, you know what? I have 20 rows, but I'm only allowed to show maybe five rows. So what it's going to do is it's going to show five rows for about 10 seconds, and then it's going to flip to another page and show for 10 seconds, then another page, and then another page, and then so on, right? So it's going to sort of do this nice cycling fade. And so you can sort of determine if you want the little page nations to show, some people like that, some people don't, um, but this is sort of what that functionality is sort of saying. Now we also have this advanced settings. And as you can see, actually, um, we, we do have someone in, in this particular data list, which is a great example here. So we can write what we call filter expressions. And so if we were to show you this, let's go ahead and just preview it so you can see it. All right, so what my filter expression is showing is it's looking at this column called status and it's saying, hey, any row that has the done assigned to it, I want you to show green. And then also in my filter expression, I have anything that is in, I believe it's in production, you show blue. And so we can help you with some of those filter expressions, which again, on the front end is going to help you sort of read and understand the data for your end users. And then down below here, this is that pagination, right? That's what it looks like with the indication with like the little dots. Some people love it. <laughs> and again, some people dislike it as well. So as you guys can see here, these are some examples, right? These are some examples that you can, you know, at least on the front end of what we can do once we get that information in the data list. Now also keep in mind, you're not, you know, you're not set in stone into just these looks, of course, but again, it just helps you sort of visually start to understand like, oh wow, what are all the capabilities that we can do? So with that being said, that was sort of the, the end of our walkthrough. You know, at any point here, if, if I went too fast or, or if you still just kind of have questions, maybe you're following along with me and you're just having some trouble, uh, definitely give us a call. Our support team, obviously, you can email us, you can give us a call, whichever works sort of for you. And we'll make sure that we kind of iron out any, you know, details or, or issues that you're having. So with that being said, you guys, I hope you guys have a great day and take care.